At one point or another, whether it's been in basketball, volleyball, dunking, or even just in life, I've constantly heard people complain about knee pain and the gradual onset of knee pain. Often the advice I hear them given is that they should work out or work harder, or that they should just take a break and when it's gone, go back to what they were doing. However, this probably leaves you with a lot of questions about what you should do and how you should do it. When we're looking to get our knees healthier, we need to start with the simplest things we can add that are going to benefit them. And over time, we're gonna work up to harder and harder things as you gain more ability to handle them. Today, I'm gonna to cover why and how you should be using isometrics as the first step to providing yourself with a solid foundation to build your athleticism and health off of from here on out. But before I can really show you how to do it, it's probably good that you know what we're even gonna be doing. So, what is an isometric? Muscles are super interesting in the fact that all they can do is pull. So that's why you're gonna have muscles on both sides of any part of your body. So there's your quad muscle that's on the top of your leg, and then there's your hamstring muscle on the back side of your leg. When your quad pulls, it extends your knee and your lower leg out. When your hamstring pulls, it's pulling your knee into flexion, and your quad is then stretching. So whenever we think of muscles doing something, it is always in the context of pulling or trying to get shorter. Muscles do not push or get longer to apply force. So now imagine where I have weight on my foot and my quad is contracting, trying to extend my leg and trying to shorten, but I'm not applying enough force for it to do that. But there's also not enough force on my leg to have it go more into flexion. The quad is trying to shorten, but it's staying the same length this is an isometric. It basically means that there's a balance between the force being put on the leg and the force that you're putting into it. So from what I just told you, you should be able now to figure out how you could do an isometric in many different ways. But I'm gonna show you the three main ways that I've done it and that I've seen other people do it that are very easy to get into and easy to control the progressions on. The first is gonna be a leg extension machine. If you don't have a leg extension machine, you'll be using a kettlebell. All you're going to do is have the kettlebell on your foot, or if you're on a leg extension machine, you'll have the leg extension pad against your chin, and you're just going to extend your knee up and then hold it slightly less than fully extended. You can play with the depth, depending on how your knee feels, but you're just going to hold this position at some range of extension and just maintain there. Once you do one side, always remember to make sure you go and you do the other side as well because we wanna keep that nice balance of workload on both legs. The next way I'm gonna show you is a manual leg isometric. So all this means is manual, as in using your hands, and you're going to hold your shin and then flex your quad up against that. So on this one, you're just using your arms as the resistance and you can play with the different distance that's comfortable for you. It's much harder to do a fully extended uh, like this, obviously, because you have to pull down awkwardly. So if you're doing something with less flexion, then I'm gonna suggest doing the leg extension machine or a kettlebell. The third way and my personal favorite is going to be using a band and wrapping it around some sort of stable surface. This could be a bed post or you know, a squat rack or anything like this. And then you're going to put it around the ankle on the side you want to work. And then you sit on the band and extend from there and you'll see that I get really nice resistance. But instead, I don't have to use my hands. And for anybody who's trying to just avoid upper body day with a burning passion, this is the way to go. And to make it more difficult, all you have to do is get a bigger band or you just pull back and sit further up on the band so that it gets more tension. And you can take this to where it's really, really tense, and you're having to put quite a bit of effort into it. Isometrics at this level can be done basically every day or every other day. We wanna be going for a level that you're contracting hard, but that you're not just crazily shaking. Usually, if you can manage it pain-free, then we wanna be going for about 60 to 70-ish percent of your ability to contract your quad. On top of the amount of sets and how long you hold the isometric for, as well as the effort that you're putting in, 
we want to constantly be working on going from a more extended knee into a more and more flexed knee until we're at a fully flexed isometric. When you're at the point where you're doing a fully flexed knee isometric with about 60 to 70 percent effort, at that point you can just start maintaining and over time because you're going to get stronger, the effort's going to go up and the isometric will progress with you naturally. Tracking every day the pain level before and after your isometric, as well as the weight or the effort that you're putting into it and the flexion is vital. You need to make sure that over time you're progressing it to be able to see the results from isometrics that you're gonna want. Also, like I said, once you're doing them at a high enough level with full knee flexion and the proper amount of effort, you don't wanna just drop them out. Keep going because you're gonna keep getting the gains that isometrics can offer to you in terms of knee stability and muscle health. So I hope this video has helped you to understand isometrics and how you can use them in your own training. If it has been helpful, then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because I'm going to be doing four more videos talking about the progressions that come after this. Also, if you or anyone you know needs help with their knees, with athleticism and strength gains, then you can find information on my coaching, which uses all these principles and more, at athleticblueprint.org. The link is in the description. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video where we talk about the good stuff.